I'm Dan. And I'm Chris. And today I wanted to start things off with a bit of a funny story. Recently I got invited to see a concert with my friend. And so I showed up at the show and I couldn't see him anywhere. So I'm texting him, he's texting me. We're both on the phone eventually trying to find each other. I couldn't see him anywhere. I thought I was being pranked. Turns out we're at two totally different shows in the same building. Oh no. It was pretty annoying because he saw a great show that night and I saw a terrible show. I was a little frustrated. Oh, that is such a bummer. Well, today we're also going to be talking about a bit of a misunderstanding, but before I give too much away, watch this. Why couldn't Jonah trust the ocean? Because he just knew there was something fishy about it. Hello everyone, my name is Liza, thanks for tuning in. I know a lot of families that pray at dinner time, God is gracious, God is good, thank you for this food, amen. Maybe you said that prayer too, or something similar. And sometimes when we say prayers, we just sort of say them, kind of like a routine. We don't actually think about what the words mean. Well, this week, we're gonna actually focus on the first part of that prayer. It's even our big idea, God is gracious. You may be wondering, what does gracious even mean? It means God shows mercy and compassion. In other words, he's kind to us in ways that we don't even deserve, but he goes above and beyond to show us his loving kindness. So when we say God is gracious, that's what we mean. Today, we are continuing our series on King David in the book of 2 Samuel. Last time, we learned about how King David showed amazing loving kindness to Jonathan's son, Mephibosheth. And before that, we heard about how David was so excited about God that he danced like no one was watching, even though everyone was actually watching. Now we're in a part of King David's story where things get a little messy. You know, we all have times where we do things that aren't God's best for us. And David has a doozy of a time. This is what happened. David's soldiers were off at war, but David stayed in Jerusalem. One night, David was on the roof of the palace and he saw a beautiful woman. Her name was Bathsheba. David thought she was so beautiful, he had to find out who she was. So he sent a messenger to find out. The the messenger came back and said she is Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam and the wife of Uriah. And so here's the problem. David is falling in love with a woman and she's married. Uriah, Bathsheba's husband, was a soldier and a very loyal one. David had him posted at the front of the battle in hopes that Uriah would be killed. And sadly, that's what happened. Uriah was killed and David had set him up for this. I told you this story was messy. David messed up big time. And then after Bathsheba had time to mourn the loss of her husband, David married her. and. Soon after, they had a son. But because of all that David had done, God wasn't pleased with him. God sent the prophet Nathan to David. He told Nathan to tell David this story. Two men lived in the same town. One was rich, the other was poor. The rich man had a very large number of sheep and cattle, but all the poor man had was one little female lamb. He had bought it, he had raised it. It grew up with him and his children. It shared his food, it drank from his cup, it even slept in his arms. It was just like a daughter to him. One day, a traveler came to the rich man. The rich man wanted to prepare a meal for him, but he didn't want to kill one of his own sheep or cattle. Instead, he took the little female lamb that belonged to the poor man Man. Then the rich man cooked it for the traveler who had come to him. When David heard this story, his heart broke for the poor man and he was so angry at the rich man. He said, the man who did this must die. How could he do such a thing? And he didn't even feel sorry about it. Then the prophet Nathan said to David, you are the man, the Lord, the God of Israel says, I anointed you king over Israel. I saved you from Saul. I gave you everything that belonged to your master Saul. And if all of that had not been enough for you, I would have given you even more. Why did you turn your back on what I told you to do? You did what is evil in my sight. You made sure that Uriah the Hittite would be killed in battle. You took his wife to be your own. Then David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. Nathan replied, the Lord has taken away your sin. You aren't going to die, but you have dared to show great disrespect for the Lord. God was gracious with David, even though David had committed a huge sin. Later, David and Bathsheba had another son named Solomon, and God loved Solomon so very much. David continued to seek after God, and God continued to be with David, even though he had done such a thing. God was gracious to David. You know, God is gracious to me too. I know I do things that aren't God's best for me too, but when I do and I realize it, I try to focus back on following Jesus well. I'm so thankful that God is gracious. I'm thankful thankful that he shows us mercy and kindness and compassion even when we don't really deserve it. Today, I'm going to live with a thankful heart for the way that God is gracious to me and to you. Thanks so much for tuning in. I'll see you next week.
Quickly turn to the person next to you and answer the following questions before the time runs out. What was my line? Question time. In today's story, David royally messed up. Who is Uriah? Who is Bathsheba? What happened? We all mess up, but this story just shows us how gracious God is. Can you think of a time when God has been gracious to you? So David had no idea that the prophet Nathan was referring to him when he was telling the story of the poor man's sheep. But afterwards, when he explained it to David, he quickly confessed to sinning against God. Yeah, and despite the horrible thing that David did, God was gracious and forgave David. Yeah, I mean, God's whole thing is love, kindness, acceptance. And when we're in a relationship with God, it's important that we show those things. Absolutely. We're gonna check in with Kimora. She shared some of her experiences with us and had a few friends chime in as well. Watch this. I have this camp counselor and she's incredible. She talks to us as if we're people, as if we're her friends. She's one of the kindest people that I know. I think kindness is when you do something for someone just because you want to help them. So the other day I was leaving the store and someone held the door open for me and I thought it was really kind. So I have this friend, Karen, and she was having a really bad day. And my other friend, Giselle, knew about it and she was out at a store and she saw something that she knew would make Karen smile. So Giselle went and purchased it to give it to Karen because she wanted her to know that she cared about her and wanted her day just to get better. One of my teachers is one of the most loving and caring people that I know. Not only do I love her teaching style, but she cares about our lives outside of school and she makes us all feel special. When I think of God as gracious, I think of him as being forgiving and understanding that he understands what we're feeling and why we're feeling it, and that's what makes him God. When I think of grace, I think about my kids. Whenever we're having one of those days where there's a timeout almost every hour, I think about how much grace God has had on me throughout my life and even when I've messed up as an adult. I once told a lie to some of my closest friends because I felt left out and I didn't feel like I belonged in the group, but it was eating up at me for a while and I felt really bad about it, so I decided to confess. Turns out they already knew and they forgave me and it's great to know that they love me for who I am. One of the most loving people I know is my three-year-old daughter. Whenever her little brother is unhappy, she's always there to care for him. I really appreciate it when people remember my birthday. What do I think about God? Well, I know he's kind, loving, caring, forgiving, and he's always there for me, no matter what. So whenever I'm just having a bad day or feeling grumpy, my mom always responds with so much grace and kindness. She always will either give me some space or invite me to go on a walk or to bake some cookies with her, and I always feel so much better after. 
When I think of God is gracious, I think of a gracious host. When you enter their home and you accidentally bump over a plant or you spill a drink on the floor, they're still very kind and you're able to have a wonderful evening and build a relationship. We heard about people being kind, loving, and caring. But because God is gracious, He's all of this and so much more. Question time. What stood out to you from all the experiences Kimora shared? How can you be gracious to others? After listening to everybody's stories, I think it's pretty clear that being gracious means being kind and loving and being okay with putting people ahead of yourself. Yeah, and it was interesting to hear what Kimora's friends thought of as being kind and gracious, mm -hmm. from remembering your birthday to picking you up when you're having a bad day. Yeah, for sure. And even Kimora's little story about her teacher being kind to Kimora and her classmates, that kind of stuff is gonna stay with them for the rest of their lives. They're not gonna forget that. Absolutely. Let's break up into our small groups now and see what this looks like in our own lives.